so this is a little contest that we ran on my Discord server on remaking Frost undercurrents. I really like this remake by Lukish. I thought he did a really good job, so I invited him onto the channel to do a little breakdown. Hi, I'm Lukish, and in this video, I would like to show how I created my remake of Undercurrents from Frost. It's not a perfect remake, as you will hear, but I believe it might give you some idea of how some of the main elements might be done. As you can see, I'm using Bitwig, but I believe there is nothing that couldn't be achieved with any other though. So let's listen to it first, and then I will go through the project and show you how it was done. So that's it, and uh, let's start with the kick. As uh, you will see, I used a lot of layering in this project. So kick is also made with two samples, one for low ends. I was basically searching for the most similar low end to the original. I picked this one, put some EQ on top to highlight the low end, suppress the high end. And for the high end, I actually sampled part of the track. I picked one of those samples where no other sound can be heard. Then some compression for the whole kick. And that's pretty much it. Then we have bass, which consists of two synths, just pure signs, a preset for an organ synth in, in Bitwig. For the first one, it's just a sub sign completed with another sign like two octaves higher. Yeah, so I balanced it somewhere here. And another sine wave is more interesting. And together. Here we have something I called aggressive bass because like compared to, to the signs, it's a more distorted sound. And it can be heard during the drop here and, and here. Uh, it's not exactly the same as in the original, but I was trying to create something at least similar. I'm using Vital for it. Two oscillators, one saw wave, one triangle wave, and some effects on top. Here we have Tom, because from the start I thought it's a Tom sample, but it turned out that it's actually melodic in the rest of the track. So uh, again, it's, it's just a sine wave. Put some EQ, wanted to cut out the low frequencies here. Mm -hmm. 
and I actually side chain uh, the base against uh, the tom as well. So not just the kick, but this is how it sounds together. Here are our drums. The clap consists of three samples. One interesting thing is this little tail before the last clap. You can hear it in the original here. I called this track Space Percussions uh, because there is a lot of reverb and delay. It sounds like this. Some saturation, EQing, want to cut out some low frequencies as well as the high end and used delay from Bitwig and Valhalla for reverb. Here we have uh, some noises for the drops. Uh, again, it's layered, high-end, something for the mid-range and crash on top so together. Here I have my melodic percussion. It's actually more noticeable from the start of the track. Yeah, so I'm talking about this little thing completed uh, with clap later. I have a few reversed samples here. This is the reason why I copied the reference track here to analyze some of the reversed samples. So for example here, I wasn't sure what uh, sample should I put here. So I reversed the track. Yeah, and now it's much more clear so I recorded something like this put a lot of reverb on top and reversed the sample so in the end it's this reversed crash which is two times within the section and here I have my hi-hats Uh, it can be heard that uh, they are slowly opening within this section. So I automated uh, decay to make uh, it opened more later in the track. And I also added a new sample here. So you can hear the difference between this part and this part. And it's completed with shakers. A lot of layering, not exactly the same as uh, in the original. I was trying to create at least the same groove. So this is how it sounds together. Now we have since again many sine waves over here. Uh, this is the main one. Yeah, so later in the track we just uh, keep lower note here. The rest is deleted. Distorted sign is a distorted sign. <laughs> uh, I used vital um, and put distortion and a bit of reverb on top. This is how it sounds. It's completed with a pure sign, I believe again, and I used something I called keys because it's it's not uh, it doesn't sound like a sine wave, but it's um, kind of more complex sound. So I was trying to create something similar using uh, two oscillators and many effects on top. This is how it sounds. And together with those synths. Okay, and now we have some Atmo vocal pads, something. Uh, I was not able to um, create or find exactly the, the same sound, so 
I just uh, downloaded a few samples from Splice to make it kind of similar. One interesting thing is this gated vocal, which is using a MIDI from this track and it's playing a sample from the sampler over here, some EQ and reverb. Again, I'm automating volume here to make some fade out effect. And here comes the embarrassing part because uh, I, I wasn't able to uh, find exactly the same vocal like later in the track it's kind of obvious that it says stay with me uh, it also appears here but as i said i wasn't able to find uh, exactly the, the same vocal so i just recorded it myself and <laughs> i was uh, singing into my track here. <laughs> uh, so this is like a, some kind of pet. And this is the stay with me part. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of awful, but together it, it sounds pretty okay, I would say. And with the rest of the track... And you might notice that uh, I'm using uh, this effect uh, rack over here. Uh, where I have a reverb and some of those tracks are using this reverb just to create an illusion that all of those intru instruments are coming from, from one place. Kind of a good practice that I got used to lately uh, to make the mix more clear in the end. So that's it. Uh, I hope it was useful for you and thanks for watching. Take care.